Hello there, my name is Azad Marden and I'm the founder and creator of Node University. Welcome to Node University Short Lectures. In this lecture, I want to talk about reloading your Node.js code and your Node.js applications. You see, by default, when you launch some Node.js file, such as using Node program.js or Node server.js, that entire file an entire code is loaded into memory and then the Node.js platform will run that from the memory. So even when you ch go back and change the code using your coding editor, it's still not gonna reflect the change in the application. The application will still be running old code. So what you must do, you must go back and terminate the old process. You must terminate it, kill it, uh, press Control C, any type of uh, kill command from Activity Monitor, from the terminal, from the command prompt, you need to stop that process. And then, assuming you saved your changes into the file, then you launch the same command again. Okay, So sooner it becomes very time consuming to always go back, terminate and start, terminate and start. And some people would forget to terminate it. They would look at their application and this didn't change. And they're like, what is happening? Well, actually, you're just running your old code. There's a three tools, three tools which I recommend for you to start using right away. Don't wait. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of hours spent trying to debug when in fact you were just running old code. So here are my three tools which will automatically restart your Node applications. Nodemon, N-O-D-E-M-O-N. Mon stands for monitoring Nodemon. Just one word, Nodemon. Tool number two, Node-Dev. Node, N-O-D-E, dash dev, D-E-V. Node-Dev. Dev stands for development. That means it's not for production, it's for your development. Typically for servers, you would use Nodmon and Node.dev for servers. If it's a small script that you just run once, you don't really need to reload it. But for the long running processes, the processes which are supposed to run forever, forever and forever, for them, those tools are very, very, very handy. And the last, the third tool, it's called pm-dev. It comes with the PM library. PM, it's a production library for your web servers and web applications for microservices. But it also has the dev tools. PM2-dev, that's the command that you can use. The benefit is obvious. You are running a similar technology which you would be running in production. So not mod, not dev, strictly for development and PM2-dev, that's for development too, but that's a child, that's a sibling of a bigger production-ready application it's called PM2. So how do you install them? You install them either locally, which I recommend, so you would say npm space i space nodmon, for example. Uh, save the exact version using dash e capital E. And also you might want to add them not to the regular dependencies, but to the dev dependencies using dash D. Why? Because those are development tools. You're not going to ship them to production. No, 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 no. Why I recommend installing them locally? Because you can save the version. You would know what tool you need. If you install them globally, which you can do as well, you might run into some conflicts. You might run into just forgetting that that you need to install them or your co-workers might um, not know that they actually need one of those tools. So installing them locally, save into package.json and use them. The most important thing, use some type of the auto reloader. Do not restart manually. It will save you hours, hours of time and it will save you from the repetitive stress injury as well. That's it for this short lecture, and I'll see you in the next short lecture from the Node University.